Let's see. Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. How are you doing? Good, 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 good. Um, as you may have surmised by my placement in the apartment, I am not at the table and I'm not where I normally am. It is because the table that I normally do my videos on and my live streams on is in my car because I used it um, to take to the Bombay Beach Lit Fest. Um, and I did not bring it back in. One of the reasons I didn't bring it back in is because I broke it. So um, I might just be leaving it on the street. I don't know why I actually brought it back with me. Um, but I did. And so I just was traveling with a piece of broken furniture. So, um, but yeah, no, it's kind of good because I'm trying to get rid of stuff. And that's a good way of getting rid of stuff, just breaking shit. And then you don't have to worry about it. I mean, I'm probably out 20 bucks that I could have got for it. Maybe 40. But um, here we are. Come see, come saw. Dolce and Gabbana. Am I right, folks? But yeah, I wanted to tell you about all the shenanigans that went down this weekend. Because shenanigans were fucking aplenty. Let me tell you what. Oh my God, what a fucking weekend. Um, it was actually probably more like 24 hours, but... The whole thing seemed to have taken a long time. So I see there's a bunch of fuckers in here. So why don't you go ahead and say hello and tell me what you did this weekend before I get into the rundown, the breakdown, and the wrap up. I'm fucking beat, dude. I slept fucking 12 hours. Not drunk. I just slept 12 hours like a normal human being, like a normal human boy. I slept. Oh, no, not a broken table. Are you going to find a replacement or just use the current area? Um, I don't want to find a replacement. I actually want to get rid of everything. So if any of you are in the Southern California area and you want a bunch of my shit, please let me know. Um, I am trying to get rid of stuff. Um, I, like, I wish I would have broken the table because I was like dancing on it and I fell through it or I power bombed some fucker through it or something like that. But I seriously broke it because it was, you'll see the video, um, but it was like on the back and I had the passenger seat down and had the table coming up. So it was like right here and I was resting on it when I was driving and stuff. And then I slept in my car. So I guess I was kind of leaning on it funny. And so when I got the table out of the car, it was like this. And um, so like if you put it down, at best, only two of the four legs were, or actually three of the four legs were touching the ground. At one point, it was just two. And I was going like this with it. So unless I want to... I don't know, use the table and put a bunch of books underneath it. I guess I could, but still the top is so like warped now. So, but Caitlin, hello. Um, Lauren, hey, oh no, you can use duct tape. I don't know if duct tape can fix warped plastic. Can duct tape fix warped plastic? I bet if it was hot enough and I bent the table and then used the duct tape to hoist it onto something that would like keep it that way for a little bit and then took the tape off. It might work, but I, I, I don't know. It's really not that big of a deal. I'm really not that upset about it. <laughs> I really don't fucking care. And like, honestly, I, I will move. If you guys really don't like this backdrop here, I, I, I can move this table, the thing that I'm on now into the room to make it more suitable for your viewing pleasure. Caitlin says this weekend I have done nothing and still wish I had done less. Oh man. Chasing the dream. Caitlin, you're killing it. Um, yeah. Still wish you had done less, huh? 
Have I ever done nothing and then wish I had done less? I think I probably have wished that, but at the same time, I felt guilty that I didn't do more. That checks out. That sounds a bit like how I roll. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. But by the time I got home, got unpacked, and um, got a shower, I got in bed at 7 p.m. last night, and I woke up at 7 a.m. this morning. I actually woke up this morning to the sound of beautiful birds tweeting and singing to each other. And I got all excited, and I jumped up to record it. And then as soon as I turned my camera on, the birds stopped, and all these cars started going by. And I was just like gotta be fucking kidding me um let's see lauren says relaxing day for me is starbucks and a pedicure oh my gosh you're speaking my language i'm about to get sushi too oh wow are you like getting it out of the ocean yourself or are you like oh, okay um how are the sales dude so jealous um yeah we will get to the sales the sales were okay they weren't fantastic, but considering everything that went down, I think I think it was okay. Um, but there were some other things that made the trip worthwhile work-wise. Um, okay, so in case you don't know, I, I guess I'll just get into this now. In case you don't know, connections, yeah, for real. It, like, yeah, totally. Um the Bombay Beach Banali, okay? Like, Google it if you've never heard of it before, because I hadn't heard of it before. But the Bombay Beach Banali, okay, is a big deal, and it happens every year. And this is the map that a kind of scary shirtless man gave me when I started to pull in. He stopped my car and asked if I needed a map. So this is the Banali, okay? All of these little things are venues where a ton of things are going on. Now, this is the one thing that I didn't like about the event is that there are so many places to go to that there's just not enough time to do all of these things that are on here. Okay. And so that really bummed me out because I went and did a bunch of shit. And then I ran into other people who were at other places and did a bunch of shit. And I didn't even know those things were existing. And I guess I should have spent more time like looking at this. But the thing that was funny. Um, <laughs> so I didn't know that the Lit Fest was a part of the Banali. I was told that it might not be like when they first started talking to me about it. So I just didn't even think about it. And um, so I ended up at this bar when I first got into town because I hadn't eaten. I was fucking hungry. Um, I had been in the car for like three and a half hours. I needed to drink the whole thing. And there's footage of all this stuff. You'll see how fucking amazing all this shit is. Um, that video is coming, by the way. Uh, let's see. JH, what's up? Shirtless men are just misunderstood. Yeah. But when a shirtless man that looks like he's been in the sun for 18 years out in the middle of the desert runs up to your car going like this, making you stop on a dirt road, you're like, I don't know. <laughs> this seems a bit sus. I don't know if I should be doing that. Um, that map is intimidating. Then again, I'm easily distracted. That may that map made my ADHD explode. I would have struggled. Dude, I seriously never even looked at it. I haven't even read this thing. Because, like, at first I was like, oh, this is cool. Now I'll, I'll know what to do. But, like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Like... This is crazy, but as you can see, I don't know if you can check it out, like if it's that clear, but like, so this right here, this is the highway that you come in on and then you come down the street and then here's some like RV parking, like free parking and shit. And then this is the town. Now the town is only five streets long 
And so it goes First Street through Fifth Street and then A Street to I Street. And I Street is also called the Isle of Palms. Okay. So it's not that big of an area. Okay. Um, and then it's like right on the beach, um, which I also didn't know that the Salton Sea still had water in it because I'm a fucking idiot and just never cared to look. Um, but it was it like the place itself was amazing. So as I'm talking to people, because like when you're there, everyone asks you why you're there because like half of the people are there to come check stuff out. Other people are there because they're participating in it somehow. But it's basically an arts festival. But there's also the lit festival that I was a part of. Um, there's also a philosophy conference. And then there is um, like performance and talks. I don't know what that means. Um Food, hangs. Oh, there were hangouts and after hours things and music. Oh, shit. I wish I would have known about the after hours things. That would have been fun. But yeah, like again, I should have just read the fucking map. But anyway, so this is all the stuff that's happening at this thing, right? So people start asking you, Mindy, hello. Um, People start asking you as soon as, like, you're stationary, oh, what are you here for? It's almost like you're in fucking prison. And they're like, what are you in for? <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know. Like, I'm um, speaking on a zine panel in the morning. And I'm going to read some poems and shit, you know. I don't really know much about what's going on. And then, so as soon as you say that, motherfuckers, like, pull their thing out. And they're like, uh uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. They're like, oh, yeah, there you are. You're right here. And I'm like, oh, shit, I am on there. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Okay, yeah, all right. And so um, that was kind of, that was a nice little, uh, that took a lot of the pressure off of me trying to explain my existence at this thing. So that was kind of cool. But, um, yeah, so, like, I woke up two hours late to go out there, um, and then I realized it was Friday, and then I realized it's the beginning of spring break, and the beginning of the spring breaks, and I wanted to be on the road by 10, and I didn't get out of the house until almost noon, and um, I was like, shit, like, all these motherfuckers are going to be trying to get out to Vegas trying to get out to Palm Springs. There's no fucking way I'm going to get there within a reasonable amount of time. And then come to find out that I guess Jill Biden came out to Palm Springs and was having some big event. And I, I don't know if Joe Biden went to, so there was just all this shit and it took fucking forever to get there. But so there's this bar called the ski in and it has, um, like people like tape dollars to the walls and the chandeliers and the pool tables. So this whole place is covered in money. Um, and then people like write on it. And I have a bunch of footage of that in the, in the video too, that you'll see. And um, I was just hanging out. And uh, the first guy that talked to me was this like older drunk dude. And um, he was fucking hysterical. And apparently according to him, <laughs> According to him, he is the guy who designed the Apple um, logo and um, didn't ask for any money or any stock because it was just like a startup and he didn't think anything of it. And um, yeah, so that was pretty funny. That guy was awesome. But here's the thing that I noticed because there were people from all over the place there. And um, what I noticed was people who live in Bombay, Bombay Beach are cool as fuck. And I would want to hang out with these people any fucking day of the week. Like they were so down to earth, just so easy to talk to just really, really fun people. The people who aren't from Bombay beach who were there for the event are very like, if you could imagine burning man 
that's like the type of person who would be there, it would seem like. I feel like there is hair on my face and it's driving me crazy. I've lost all my hair ties, so I might just cut my hair off today. Uh, Lauren asks, will I do the event again? I would. I would do it different. And I'll tell you how different in a little bit. So, um, oh, yeah, the people. It's like very hippie kind of people who are very like, oh, wow, everything is so amazing and great. Like the kind of person that would end up being a life coach or something like that. Okay. But then they're there with their cliques of friends. Okay. And if you try to like talk to them, it's like, like motherfucker, why are you like in our space? And it's just like, like you're loud as fuck. I'm hearing you all talk about how like loving you feel this environment is. And then as soon as somebody you don't know approaches you, and I'm not just talking about women, I'm talking about guys too. They're very standoffish. The people who are a part of the event are pretty cool and were, would like talk to you and shoot the shit with you. The people from Bombay Beach are awesome and cool and would sit and talk talk with you and shit. But the people who come for the event to be enlightened, like in my experience, and I'm not saying this was everybody there, but in my experience, I would say almost all of them were complete fucking assholes. And like wearing the sheep's clothing of like enlightenment. I don't know how else to put it. There were a couple people I met who were, who traveled really far to come to the event and they were cool as shit, but it seemed like just in general. And here's a good way to tell the more ridiculous the person's outfit is, the more of an asshole they're going to be. Okay. So if you're around people who are, half naked or who have more makeup on than clothes or who are wearing a lampshade or um i don't know like just dressed ridiculously they're going to be complete and total fucking assholes whereas people who just are dressed normally are fucking normal people and cool to talk to so there's that but again you will see a lot of this in the video because Believe it or not, I did most of my filming for the vlog for this when I was totally pissed drunk. And that's another thing. Okay. More makeup than clothes. Laugh pretty hard. Dude, seriously. You would not believe some of the get-ups these motherfuckers had on. It was pretty fun. It made me feel overdressed. Um, all right. Off to dinner. We'll catch the replay. Awesome. Yeah, the event was so fucking cool. There was like a circus. There was an opera, there was a drag show, there was um, like acrobats, jugglers, uh, and I mean, the art installations of it, like just alone were awesome, but there were fireworks, there was um, golf carts made up to look like giant animals, um, just like cruising around and shit. Uh, I, dude, there was, there was so much shit to do, and I fucking... I would have loved that. Um, what does that say next to that? Hate that I live in the middle of nowhere. Caitlin, you used to live out in the high desert out here. Like, did you ever go to Salton Sea? Like, I just never thought that was anything, like, I have no idea. And I've seen, I don't, I don't fucking know how I miss this place. Anyway, so I go to this bar. And um, the drinks were cheap. The food was kind of expensive and it wasn't that good. The drinks were super cheap. And so like, it was like, uh, like, I don't know, like $3 beers or something like that. So I would just go up to the bar and order two beers at a time um, because just getting to the bar to order a drink fucking took forever. So like the, after standing in line for a half hour to get a drink, I'm like, just give me two because it's going to take me a while. Um, but the bartenders were super fucking cool too. And then like, there was this dude, um, like just sitting there smoking a cigar and he was looking very, um, 
not mysterious, but like, it was just weird. It was like, everyone's like dressed like whatever. And then there was this one dude with like really well-kept hair, clean shaven, um, black shirt, black pants, boots, and smoking a cigar and um, drinking a Modelo. And I was just like, fuck, dude, who's this guy? Like, what racket is he running? Like, does he own this place? It was just like, he had this like aura about him. And then I finally just went and sat down next to him and we started talking. And so shout out to George. George was like my fucking wingman like that whole first night it was fucking awesome like we like destroyed that fucking place right um but he he's cool shit and he's from there and he didn't even know it was happening he's like the city next to uh bombay beach it's like north shore it's still on the salton sea but uh, just another town up and he said that most people who live in that area go and party in mexicali over the border because it's only like 45 minutes away or something like that and um, he's like, I normally just stop here and get a drink and use the bathroom and then go to Mexicali. But like this place is popping. I've never seen it like this before. So um, I'm just going to like fucking like stay up here, I guess. And so like all night, dude, like we're buying each other drinks and then all these other people start buying us drinks. And then there was like this guy giving out... Um, like samples of cut water, like all these different types of canned cut water and then tequilas and then fucking mezcal. And then we were just hanging out with him for a while and he was cracking up. And so he just like pulled out some whiskey and we were like doing shots and stuff. And then we're doing shots with the bartenders. Like shit just got fucking crazy really fucking quick. Um, and then I ran into some people who um, cut, cut water is a type of alcohol. It's like a new brand. I don't know. It's been around for a while. The Paloma is fucking delicious. I've had that tons of times. Um, but they have like that that mule shit, like mule something I've had before at other places too. Um, it's kind of like a seltzer, I guess. But uh, like I got spotted and um, by some people, and they're like, "Oh, you're Matt." And so that was cool. And then I ran into the um, people who are putting on the festival, like the promoters of it at the bar too. And we just kind of ran into each other. And so that was awesome that I got to meet them. And um, those guys are fucking amazing. And honestly, since there's a lot of booktube people here, one of the chicks that puts on the event is named Gina something. And she wrote this book that you guys have all, like I've seen it on booktube a bunch. It's called... Um, shit uh it's like a pink book that has like a illustration of a wolf coming on i think oh what is the name of the book i don't know if you guys know an author gina something i met her she was there and then um rob is actually this guy who's in this band called the urinals and he's an author as well and these are all like um i guess they're like MFA professors and they teach somewhere and um, Patrick who was awesome. And like, they were so fucking nice and I wish I would have had more time to hang out with them. Um, but then they left the bar and it was probably good. I was getting rowdy and stupid at that point. So, um, and then like we were at a liquor store and this like little punk kid comes in there and um, he was a Creeperson fan. And so he started talking to me about Creeperson. And I'm like, holy shit. Like, what's up, dude? And um, so that was fucking cool. And uh, then, yeah, we saw, like, the acrobats and the jugglers. And George, he's like, yeah, dude, um, I think there's, like, a strip tease or something happening. We should watch the strip show. And I'm like, oh, yeah? And then he's like, yeah. Yeah don't you remember those girls came up to us in the bar and said, Hey, come to our show. And they were like dressed in like, um, I don't actually, I don't even know if I saw these people. I had no idea who he was talking about, but he said that we had talked to him. I don't remember. Cause I remember there were a couple chicks in lingerie on roller skates. And he said that wasn't them. So I have no idea who the fuck he was talking about. 
Um, but so we went and did that. And then we ended up in someone's backyard that was having this weird, like, like I filmed it. So it's like this weird mime kind of like he was like, he wasn't a mime because he was reading a book and then there was like a cello and an oboe being played and the lights were all weird. And it was very theatrical and dramatic. So we were in someone's backyard. This was going on. Someone was cooking chicken. And so we were eating chicken and then we went to the bar that was in this backyard and um, like order drinks and they're like, well, what do you want? And then George is like, surprise us. And they poured shit out of a bucket or something. I don't fucking know. And um, it was pretty strong. And I remember it was strong enough for George to ask for them to like pour some water in it or something. And I, I didn't do that. I probably should have because um, I could taste that drink all up until last night. Um, it was pretty fucking gross. But, uh, oh, and then here's another thing that goes on out there. So there's this thing called the Martians and Mars out there. And apparently, now again, I don't know this for fact. This is just what I heard from people talking. The Martians is a group of people who live out in the middle of the desert that's kind of by Bombay Beach, and they are training to live on Mars. And you know that they're Martians because they cruise around on those electric unicycles. And so if you see anyone on an electric unicycle, chances are they're, they refer to themselves as Martians. And there were a bunch of people in like jumpsuits, like Ghostbuster looking jumpsuits. And apparently those are the like um, initiation people who are trying to like become Martians. And I was just like cracking up at this whole thing. And I'm like, oh, well, that's kind of cool. Cause like I'm into like self sustaining living and all that shit. So like I could kind of get on board with what the fuck they were talking about. But then I find out that um, Elon Musk is apparently funding that whole operation. This is allegedly, but this is what I was told that Elon Musk is funding that whole operation because those are the people that he's going to fly to Mars to be the first colonizers and shit and i was just like what the fuck is going on right now <laughs> so that was fucking crazy and just like that tripped me out a bunch anyway so um the fireworks were crazy met a bunch of people um and then i was so wasted that i was like i need to either stop or i'm just gonna go all night because like I feel like I'm about to hit a wall right now. And so um, George took me to the free parking lot where my car was. And I just fucking slept in my car. Like, that was the whole thing. I was hoping to get a hotel or something around there. But there is nothing there. Like, you might be able to get an Airbnb. But if you didn't book it beforehand, there wouldn't be anything there. So I just slept in my car. And that was, like, one of the worst night sleeps ever. And I hated it kept waking up all night. The sun woke me up as soon as it came out. And um, then I realized I had to be at the event for um, like, we, we went on at 10 and, or that's what time we were supposed to go on. And the place opened at nine and um, the organizers told me to be there at eight to start setting up. So I got there at seven 45 there was no one at the coffee shop. There was no event people there. There was no nobody there. There were a lot of stray dogs like barking at everything and all this other stuff. So I just waited there and waited there and waited there. Finally, the place opened and then maybe like 9.45, the promoters started showing up. And um, like we set everything up and the thing that was fucking funny as shit like our zine thing our time got cut because the chick who went on before us was doing a um uh workshop 
called um, Memoir in a Minute. And ironically, the Memoir in a Minute workshop went 20 minutes over. So they cut our time and that kind of pissed me off a little bit um, just because like we had a pretty good turnout for what it was. And there was so much interaction, like the Q and a shit was going so well that like when they cut it, I was like, ah, oh, that fucking sucks. Cause people were just having a ton of questions and like, I was supposed to read for 10 minutes. I only read one poem cause I didn't want to just take all the time up doing that. And then I think, um, the other guy, uh, Jonas, who was reading from one of his zines, I think he cut his time on reading as well. He was reading a section out of his um, zine. But it was just so crazy. And like, as far as the sales go, the sales were good. But, um, and I know this is going to sound like no shit. And that this is like, obviously, this is how it goes. Um, but if you ever are going to be reading your shit, there is a lot of power in reading your work because what I sold the most of were the copies of the chat book that had the poem in it that I read. So I read something out of off the grid, um, because we were in the desert and it just seemed fitting. And I read um, Nuts of a Ground Squirrel. And um, I don't know. It's just so many times when I do readings, I read shit out of books that aren't in print anymore. Because I'm like, oh, well, like no one will be able to get this. So let me give them something that they don't know and can't find if they don't already have it. But if you are reading something that you actually have, like, it is so powerful. And I know that sounds like no shit, you idiot. But just seeing it happen in real time, because I was talking about my other chat books, too. I'm like, you know, like, oh, and this is like drinking less and this is shit poems and this is about this and this is about that. Um, it's really powerful. The other thing is that I noticed is that if you have a bunch of themed chapbooks, i.e. like I do, and you can read something out of a chapbook that is kind of focused on the same type of people you're around or the same kind of thing. Like, so like being in a community that basically the entire community is off the grid and then reading poetry about living in the desert and being off the grid. I mean, that was like nail on the head, but like that really helped a lot, I think. So um, just try to keep that in mind. And if you have like, if you know there is an event coming up, like I'm going to write a whole chat book on the Benali. So if I go back next year, I can have that book and like read out of it and the whole thing. And like, I don't know if that would be too on the nose, but like, I think that would be interesting. So if you know, you're going to be at an event and the event is about something or another, um, definitely put stuff together for that event and have that out. And one of the greatest things we have as people who like self publish our shit and who can just make a chat book or make a zine at the drop of a hat is that we can do this. A lot of the other people who were there who are traditionally published were kind of complaining about like, yeah, you know, like my book was supposed to be out by now, but it's not, it's been two years and the book's still not out or like, um, like, oh yeah, the book got picked up a year ago and I'm still waiting. It'll probably be another year before it comes out and all this shit. And I get that that's how traditional publishing works, but ADD boy over here, I, I don't know if I could ever do that. I would love to be able to do something like that. I just don't know if I can. Um, let's see. Uh, Caitlin says, that is also wild. JH says, yeah, that's happened at everything I've ever organized. If it's on stage, it gets sold the most. Yeah, totally. 
Sounds like an amazing overall experience. It was really cool. And I should have stayed. I was supposed to stay through yesterday. And then like the big party was going to be last night. And then um, there was still shit going on today. There's still shit going on there right now. But um, I just, I was so fucking exhausted. And there was like this huge window in between when our event ended and when all the next shit was going to happen that like, I was just like, fuck. And I needed something to eat. I'm like, let me just try to find something to eat. And the two places that had food in that area were so packed. I'm like, I'm not going to get anything there. I hadn't eaten yet today or yesterday. And I'm like, let me just get on the highway and drive towards, um, the freeway because I'm sure I saw something and it took me 45 minutes driving before I found a place to eat. Oh, let me tell you about this place. Nikki Jam, what's up? Um, Nikki is um, working on the next draft of her manuscript. Everybody clap. Um, so yeah, so I, I just wanted to go somewhere that was air conditioned that had food that people would bring to me and I could order drinks and just sit there. So the first place I found was this place called Texas Roadhouse, which right off the bat, I should have fucking just stopped. I should not have fucking gone in. I pull up and they're blasting like awful, awful modern country music. And I'm just, oh God, this sounds like late 80s pop. This is fucking horrendous. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to go in. I go in and um, they're like, yeah, just sit at the bar. You know, we're kind of busy. I'm like, okay, no problem. The bread, they had these little things of bread, little buns with an apple butter. That was delicious. I should have just ate that and got the fuck out of there. Okay. So they have all these TV screens around. One's showing a rodeo. One is showing just a bunch of fat white people dancing, like in stands or something, whatever. It's fine. And then there was some like, like MMA fight that was like brought to you by some like Christian um, pro life thing, which I, I I don't understand the correlation between beating the shit out of somebody and then um, forcing someone to have a baby. Never mind. I think I see the correlation now. Yeah. Okay. So that works. Um, and then there was like some like basketball games on like women's college basketball. It was just like a barrage of shit with loud fucking music. And, um, so I'm like, just give me like a fucking cheeseburger and some fried pickles, like whatever. It's fine. All the food besides that bread tasted like fucking shit. It was so gross. And I'm just like, what the fuck am I doing here? And what made me even more mad is every fucking fast food place you could ever imagine was in the same parking lot. But I just really wanted to go sit down and relax. And I was like thrusted into the fucking rodeo. So that was awful. Oh, and then I got to stop at the um, Cabazon uh, dinosaurs from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. So that'll be in the vlog too. Um, I love, I'm like a sucker for cheesy roadside attractions. Like I, I eat it up. So I stopped and did that and um, then came home and I couldn't find a place to park on the street. And I just like parked in a red zone and I just sat in my car for like 45 minutes just going, fuck, I'm going to have to like unpack this car and then I'm going to have to go find a place to park. <sighs> and then I'm going to have to walk up the hill. I just could not get myself to fucking do anything. So as soon as I finally did get home and got everything going, what is up, Mr. Gilsdorf? Um, I just, I grabbed a couple beers, got in the shower, and just um, stayed in the shower, soaking my poor feet, and um, had my beers, came out 7 p.m., went to bed, woke up at 7 a.m. So, yeah. I, oh, yeah. So, by the way, I just kept driving. I was supposed to go back, but I was already so far out, and the weather was getting shitty. It was starting to rain, and the wind was blowing so hard. I was like, fuck, I don't want to just be in the mud. Um, 
when it's pouring. So anyway, I came home. So yeah, so I sold um, some chapbooks. I sold some paperbacks. But um, off the grid, I sold more of than anything. So that was kind of cool. But uh, and that's the other thing, too, I got to figure out because they handled all of the sales and um, they did it through like Venmo or something like that. And so I actually haven't gotten like paid for what I sold yet. Um, but I'm sure that'll be taken care of after the event. Like, I'm not worried about it at all. But yeah, there was so much cool shit. Like, I wish I fucking... Like, it would be awesome if this thing was, like, a week long and there was, like, one stage where all of these things were going on at. Because, like, this is just way too many things to try to decide what you want to do. Because, like, every little mark right here, that's the time. And then it'll have all the things that are going on at that time. And some of them, it's like, like, look at this, dude. So, Saturday at 2 p.m. These are all the things that are happening Saturday at 2 p.m. There's a fashion show. There is an uh, AI experience. There is queering the literary landscape. There is um, Turner's White Gold. I don't know what that means. Um, Mr. Bombay Beach Pageant. There is um, a panel of something that doesn't say what it is. Then there is a Kelp Journal Noir Fest, a crime noir reading. That would have been fucking cool. Um, then there is... Dylan Meek. I don't know what that means. That's probably someone's name. Um, Blue Jeans Open Gallery. Um, Afogados. I don't know. Dracar Noir. Um, Pharaoh and Tarot. Um, a tarot reading thing. There was a poetry house at this fucking thing, and I didn't even go to it. Um there was an art installation, a water in the throes of death. Let's see. Yeah. So all of that shit was going on at two o'clock all over town. So there's no way you could have hit all that stuff. Um, at 10 o'clock, there was Bombay Boom Boom, a pyrotechnic show, um, Goliath and Fire, um, Five Thieves on Creativity. I don't know what that means. Uh, a jazz orchestra. Um, a buffet. Sidecar Tommy. Um, and then Maria Tambian was performing, I guess. Uh, Life's Waiting Room. Immersive Death Cafe. That sounds like fun. Um, Rogue. and some I can't read what that says. Pussycat Lounge, um, an open door for a closed world, a DJ, Body Disturbia, a circus, um, the Fantastic Mr. Something, I can't read it, um, Secret Cuddle Puddle, a speakeasy cuddle puddle. Okay. Um, someone else was performing. So, and that was all at 10. So there were so many different fucking things to go do that like, it's impossible to do it all. And I, that's what I fucking hate more than anything about festivals that whenever you want to go, there will be things that you don't get to see. And I fucking hate that. Just have one place where all of this shit happens and make it super fucking long. Who fucking cares? If someone doesn't want to see that thing, they could go fuck off and do something. Like, hang out and get some to eat or whatever. So, like, festival culture just drives me fucking crazy. Because, like, like we, I, where, I guess it was the next morning. Like, there were a bunch of us sitting around with our phones, like, showing each other all the things that we went to. And, like, none of us had gone to the same thing. And everything looked amazing. And I was just so, like, apparently there was um, a full production of West Side Story that was really fucking good. A bunch of people went and they just thought it was fucking amazing. 
Yeah, I mean, that's why I don't do... That's why I don't do music festivals. Because at every festival I've ever been to, there's a bunch of shit bands that I don't care about seeing. And then all the bands that I want to see are all on at the same time on different stages. And it just, like, it sucks. So, um, yeah. But again, if I would have known... All of this shit before I went, I feel like I would have made a plan of the things that I wanted to do. Um, but I got to see Arturo Sandoval with my brother. Oh, shit. And that was the main attraction for us. It was the height of the whole event for us. I bet, dude. Um, I kind of love the fact that you all gathered together with totally different experiences. Sounds chaotic as fuck, though, honestly. Dude, it was fucking nuts. Like, seriously. Um yeah, and it was kind of like my social battery fucking hit the limit, and I just couldn't fucking handle it anymore. And um, I just had to split. And that was another thing. If I also would have known that um, almost every place there only takes Venmo, I would have had that set up. And it's like weird. I have a Venmo debit card, but Venmo on my phone wasn't working, and there were a bunch of apps that... I couldn't get to turn on and um, a couple of the apps I had downloaded on my phone, but I hadn't opened them in a while. So they went to the cloud and I couldn't get them to come back onto my phone. And so I was just like fucking irritated as fuck. So I had to find a place to, that would take card so I could like fucking get shit. So, and like I was just wanting to transfer money from my PayPal to my Venmo and I couldn't fucking do it. But anyway, so it was a lot of fun. Um, I would do it again. I would do it better next time for sure. And honestly, I feel like I would want to do more. Like it would have been awesome to teach some workshops and like do more things. And honestly, what I could have done is I could have just went there with my table and opened up Friday and just been at my table reading my fucking poetry, trying to sell my books. I should have fucking done that. I didn't know you could do that. Like, I don't know what the fuck I thought this was going to be, but this is not at all what I thought it was going to be. Like this, this was like, like Burning Man. It was like just fucking wild chaos all over the place. And I thought this was going to be like more structured. Here's the door you walk in and blah, blah, blah. This was just like a bomb landed in a town and everyone was doing whatever the fuck they wanted to. I would have fucking done my car up, painted the sides, had a fucking megaphone on top, like driving the car, reading poetry. Like I would have been doing that if I would have known that's what this thing was like. I'll, I'll remember this for next year. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, and I would have brought water. That was another thing. Me and my dumbass thought that there would just be like places I could like run into and like, like a gas station and pick up a bottle of water. It wasn't that easy. It wasn't that easy at all. Sounds like 1984 level interference with your Venmo. Yeah, totally. Like, but Venmo wasn't the only thing that wasn't working. There was a bunch of shit, like a bunch of apps that I couldn't get to work on my phone. So, um, like, I think I posted on Instagram when I first got there. And then as the night went on, and like, I know it has to do with like the internet out there too. Cause like one time I paid with my card at this place and it took, it took almost 10 minutes for just the card to go through to get like an okay. And I mean, again, you're talking about a place that probably has the population of like 500 people now suddenly with thousands and thousands of people there all using like whatever Wi-Fi or whatever the fuck is in the area. So that might've had a lot to do with it too. But, um, no, I met some amazing fucking people. And that was the thing I was going to say. Like, after the event, I got to talk to a bunch of the people who were at the event. 
And um, it was kind of cool to see how in such a short amount of time you could like touch somebody to have them want to do something. Because a lot of the people who were there are traditionally published authors. And um, they were so like blown away by how the zine community is and how it works and how long it's been going and all this shit. And um, like, I guess just talking a little bit about how freeing being able to publish whatever the fuck you want, whenever you want to is like really resonated with a bunch of them. And like afterwards, a bunch of them came up to me individually and they're like, you know what? I really think I'm going to try this. I think I'm going to do this. Like, I just think that would be really therapeutic. And this one woman came up to me and she's like, honestly, the idea that I can do something without having to ask permission, like kind of blew me away. So I think she's like, I already have ideas. I'm going to go home and start working on this. And so like shit like that was really fucking cool. And um, honestly, that made the whole trip seriously and um oh this one person came up really young um kind of like punker anarchist person and they were saying how like what they've always known about zines was to promote political awareness and they were saying how whenever they put zines out it's like how to be an anarchist how to fight capitalism, how to do this, how to do that, how to steal from CBS and all this other shit. And they were saying like, I never ever once thought to make art with zines. And I know that sounds really stupid and it seems like something I should have known, but I just never thought of it before. And so now all I want to do is just like create and like, kind of have this like whole therapeutic like art thing and see what happens. And I don't know. It was just like, there were so many cool little things like that, that happened that um, it was really neat and I really enjoyed it. So I wish we had more time. Um, I don't know. I'm sitting here telling you about the whole thing and I was there for, two days about and only like what like an hour or 45 minutes of it was the actual thing that i was supposed to be there for uh yeah like if i do this again i'm gonna do it totally fucking different i'm gonna do it hard yeah let's see uh gilsdorf says stanford was chaos for their Harry Potter fest. Beautiful town. Don't give a fuck about the event, but it was fun visiting. Oh, you went to a Harry Potter festival in Stanford? Wow. All the fun things. Yeah. Anarchy cookbook stuff. But it was funny. We were talking about, um, because one of the zines that um, Jonas put in his presentation was this zine that was a matchbook that had like a zine in it. Like it opened up and there were pages and shit, but there were matches in it. And after you're done reading it, you're supposed to light the match and burn it. Like it's not supposed to be kept. You just do the thing. And so when I was talking to the anarchist person about that stuff, we were cracking up and I'm like, oh my God, yeah, you could totally do like the flaming tennis ball thing and like i don't know if you know this but like you're supposed to take a tennis ball cut a little hole in it and then chop the heads off of a box of strike on anywhere matches and put the heads in the tennis ball and then tape the tennis ball and then you throw it and then when you throw it it hits the ground bounces on something and then bursts into flames and we were like oh dude just instead of writing a zine just write on the tennis ball write your whole like thesis your whole zine whatever on the tennis ball and then like throw the tennis ball after you read it like that's your zine like here you go this is a projectile bomb um read this and then toss it 
Um, we were cracking up. That was a lot of fun. But I gave out a bunch of blood rags. So that was cool. Um, those were all over the place. I should have gave out more now that I think about it. Because I still had some left and I, I shouldn't have come back with anything. I should have just gave everything away for free, dude, just to go. I don't know. Um, it's all good, but it was it was a good it was a good time. Write out a normal, normal tennis ball and give it to your dog. Never heard of the tennis ball. Oh, yeah, the ice cream man's coming. Um, yeah, no, the Anarchist Cookbook, if you're not familiar with it, has all sorts of um, horrible things you can do. And a, a I don't know if this is true anymore, but it used to be that if you ever checked out the Anarchist Cookbook in the library, it would put your name on an FBI watch list. And I think the whole reason why it was available in the library was for the FBI to look at who would be looking stuff like that up. But now, it, I mean, it's all over the internet. You can find it. Yeah, there it is right there. Um, yeah, why? it's just so funny because I was just hanging out at a bar and then the whole night happened around that. And if I would have thought better, I would have had my bag with me because I had it and I had all the blood rags and I had all my chat books. I should have had it on me and been walking around with it. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. And I just now realized I could have been doing that. Fucking idiot. <laughs> Fucking dick. Ah, oh, such an idiot. What I learned in jailer's school is the anarchist cookbook and another book would get you flagged. So maybe true. What other book? Yeah. Treat it for research. Like your next outing. Yeah, I know. I just get down on myself when I miss opportunities. And dude, if I would have known it would have been like that, I would have ordered another fucking thing of stickers and just plastered the fucking place. I had a brain fart. <laughs> I forgot. I'll email you when I remember. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so, yeah, it was pretty cool. Let's see. Anything else going on, guys? I was just editing the footage from it all, and it's, oh, it's over an hour, so I'm going to try to get it down a little bit. Um, but, yeah, so when I was drunk... I was just like going up to random strangers and asking them stupid questions. Um, so there will be that in it too. So that'll be fun for everybody. I went up to this one dude because I thought he was a statue. And then I found out he wasn't a statue. And I thought he was a dude guarding the sign. And so I was going to ask him questions about guarding the sign. And it turns out he wasn't guarding the sign. It's just where he ended up standing. And um, so that was pretty funny. That was a good time. It was basically me making an ass of myself. And then I thought this girl was going to kill herself. And so I went and asked her if I could film her doing it. And she didn't get mad. And she's like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm like, oh, okay. Ah, writing novel too, but I sold another book the other day. I need to mail you before you leave for your trip. Yes. Yes. If you are going to mail me things, guys, you have to get it to me before the end of April. Because after April, I do not know where I'm going to be. I know I'm going to be on the East Coast in May, but I don't know if I'm coming back here. That's still um, up in the air. And I don't know how I'm getting to the East Coast. There was a part of me that wanted to take a train because I've always had this romantic notion about writing a novel on a train, going across the country, looking out the window and seeing the prairie go by slow. I don't know. It's probably stupid and boring as fuck. But um, the idea has hit. So I don't know if I'm going to fly out there. Um after this trip, I decided I'm not going to drive out there because my car 
is running well, but I just cannot fucking handle it. Train fare is affordable if you can work the system. Okay, I'm going to ask you the biggest please in the world. If you know how to work the system, can you please put it in an email and send it to me? Because I would love to work the system. Oh my gosh, my whole life has been me trying to work the system. So if there's a good way of working it, please tell me what it is. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. That would be amazing. I would love that so much. Please. Oh man. So yeah, again, everyone at the Bombay Beach Lit Fest were amazing. Um, the people of Bombay Beach are fucking gold. It's so funny. The guy, the first dude who talked to me, this is the first thing he said to me because he caught me checking out um, this chick's ass that was walking by. Fair, fair, fair. You know, no big deal. But the the old drunk dude, awesome motherfucker. He's like, he's like, you know, the women here in Bombay Beach, they're fucking beautiful. And I'm like, I'm like, it looks like it. And he's like, but you need to have all of them in a row to get one full set of teeth. <laughs> I was dead. I was fucking dead. I lost my dad. He loves trains. Um, I might be able to get you some info on how to look up good tickets, train system, and not the system. Perfect. That would be awesome. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. But yeah, so that guy was great. Um, and it was funny too, like he had dentures and he, first he was at a different table and then he came and sat down next to me and was like doing this like whisper talk to me. And as he was talking, like I think his like top dentures kept falling and clanking on his bottom dentures. So it would be like word, word, clank, word, clank, word, word, clank, word, word, clank. And I was just like, I'm like, dude, this is fucking awesome. Like, this is so fucking cool. It was like, because at first I didn't know what the sound was. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, I'm like looking around and then I started watching his mouth and it's like, ch -ch -ch -ch. oh man, it was great. But that dude had more stories than... And I mean, just like he should, I mean, the dude that was like in his like mid seventies or something, you know, like that's why you hang out in bars to hear motherfuckers tell stories, dude. That guy had some great ones. But I will say this, um, in uh, defense of the women of Bombay Beach, every single person I saw seemed that they had a full set of teeth. I did not. I don't think I saw, I don't think I saw anybody with only a tooth or two, but yeah, the bartenders at the ski in, um, not a bad set of lookers guys. I'm not going to lie. Some good shit in there. Trying to remember if she told me what her name was. Um, because George, the guy who like I was hanging out with all night Friday, um, he kept telling people, like when we were talking to him, that I was a world famous poet. And um, so that was hysterical. But one of the bartenders there, she was like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, well, I'm a rapper. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And she's like, yeah, I just like, you know, get really fucking angry. And like, I always wanted to write poetry, but like, I just get so fucking mad. And I just want to like, you know, rap. And I'm like, all right. And she's like, yeah, I never liked rap until I started. I'm like, oh, so do you do, do, you do like spoken word shit? And she's like, no, I just start fucking screaming. And I was like, okay. And then she started to do it a little bit and then like stopped herself. And she's like, well, yeah, you know, that's just like kind of the shit I'm into. And I'm like, and I was super fucking interested. I'm like, okay, so like 
you're going to be a woman who screams at me and then call it art. I'm like, this is new. Bring it. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. All right. All right. All right. Um, I'll, I'll probably start wrapping it up now. For those of you wondering, the uh, the video of me going over your comments and then talking about stalkers and shit, that was supposed to come out Thursday, but because of the thing with Neely and all that shit, I like put that off. So that'll probably come out tomorrow or Tuesday. And I'll do another one of those. And then... Um, there's a part for members that I'm going to put up too. And then I will put up the uh, footage from the actual uh, Benali. And then um, there is a podcast coming up with me and Adam Crawford about audio chat books. And then there is a, another podcast where um, Chasey Delaney actually... Like, we, she didn't mean to do it like this, and I didn't mean to do it like this, but she sent me audio of a bunch of questions. So it's kind of like she's interviewing me. And so that's going to be an episode coming up, too. So, um, yeah. But I don't know. I guess that's it. Unless you guys have any questions or anything that you want to throw my way while we're here. In fact, let me go get a cup of coffee real quick, and then I'll be right back. Oh, man, I just knocked all that over. Motherfucker. Okay, I'm going to get some coffee, guys. Hang on. Sorry, guys, I was boiling a kettle that didn't have any water in it. Sorry. I fucked up, everybody. I fucked up. That is not a warm cup of coffee at all. <sighs> Screaming lady reminds me 
of 90s bands with front women. Yeah, dude, like seriously, she was super riot girl. Like she totally could have pulled that off for real. Um, I missed the sec I missed the section due to screaming kids. Lead butt fell on tiny baby, lots of screaming. Oh no. I could use some coffee. These kiddos are killing me. Oh. I am so sorry. Oh, and I spilt some on my computer, but it's okay because it's not hot because I fucked up and did not boil the water properly. Oh, that's actually fucking kind of disgusting. I would rather have fucking ice cold water with coffee in it than almost warm coffee. That's just, that's too much. Oh, too much. But yeah, so... Um, Anything else you guys want to shoot the shit about? A few months ago, my oldest dumped hot tea into my super expensive laptop. It no longer works. Did you do the rice thing? Did you like bury it in a thing of uncooked rice? Recently had a matcha latte with lavender. Outstanding. I've never had one with lavender. Um, the most expensive thing my kid broke um, was also a laptop, but this was when <clears throat> she was potty training and my ex-wife at the time, well, my wife at the time used to do this thing where she would sit on the couch with her laptop. And then when she wanted to get up for something, for some fucking reason, she, even though there was a table next to her and she was on the couch, she would put the laptop on the floor and then get up and go do something. Well, <clears throat> um, I can't remember why, but I think she was changing her clothes or something. And my kid was like, oh wait, no, I gotta go to the bathroom. And so, and she was like three, okay? So she's running to the bathroom. The computer's on the floor. She hurdles over the computer, and as she was jumping over, she pisses and pisses onto the keyboard of the computer. I didn't realize she had pissed when she made the jump, and she's in the bathroom. I'm, I followed her into the bathroom, and I'm like, yay, you did it. Look at you. You know, the whole fucking thing. And um, when we come out, there's, like, smoke coming up off the floor. <laughs> And like the computer actually, like there were flames and everything. It fucking caught on fire and the whole fucking deal. So um, that was pretty awesome. And then um, my ex being the shyster that she was, uh, took, we went to Fry's and um, took it in. And she's like, I was just typing and the computer caught on fire. So I need a new computer. And they're like, well, we're going to do some forensics on it and everything to make sure. And um, she's like, yeah, do whatever you want. But your computer caught on fire and almost burned my house down and killed me and my family. So you need to give me a new computer. And so they're like, well, we'll give you a loaner while we figure this out. And then when they got the results back, it tested positive for urine and so my ex is like, bullshit, you mean to tell me that people piss in computers enough for you to have like what urine is to like be able to test? She's like, this is bullshit. You're just trying to fuck me out of money. I'm not giving the loaner back and all this other stuff. And we'll just call it even because I think you're just trying to fuck me. And they fucking let her have it. They let her have the loaner computer, um, which was probably a better computer than the one she had anyway. But, um, yeah, she, her whole life is how to get something from somebody. Like, she's just, she's amazing at it. And, um, I don't know, like I always said, and, um, I got to figure out a way to say this without it, like, beaming my stream here, but I always said that, if she had any kind of drive or ambition or wasn't so fucking lazy, she could, oh, I'll say it like this. She could be a total world dictator. 
and it would be easy for her if she wasn't so fucking lazy. Like she could do anything in the world and have people follow her, but she is just way too lazy for that. Let's see here. Um, my laptop before that one also caught on fire. They shouldn't catch on fire. Anything that you're putting on your lap or the name of it is something that, that tells you to put it on your lap should never catch on fire. That shouldn't be a fucking thing. That's crazy. Not from your end, though. Yeah, your story definitely beats mine. I don't know, dude. A kid just pouring a hot cup of tea into your computer, that kind of sucks. Um, a PP swab, yeah. Or swab, I think is what you're trying to get at. Yeah, for real. Good question on what has my kid broke. My kid also broke my heart before. Um, but, you know, whatever. Sucks, but still not pee. Yeah. Well, there's there's always tomorrow, Caitlin. If if you if you really want to have a good pee story, just piss in your computer and it will catch on fire too. I still got time. Yeah, um, I'm sure you have at least one, if not three, kids that um, you're gonna need to potty train here in the near future. So, jury's still out. It, it could still happen. You got this. In fact, if you make a lane, like just put a bunch of furniture and stack books up in between your kid and the bathroom, and then put the laptop open in the middle of that, there's a good possibility you could pull it off. I mean, you're kind of forcing it at this point, but if you just want the thing to happen, you know, it, it's you're okay. You could also probably just take the take the bucket out and just put the potty training chair on top of your open laptop. That would also work. That's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel, though. Like you need to have a little more gamesmanship than that. Make it quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm like totally in my head right now trying to think of all the things I would have done different at the event if I would have known more about the event. That's another thing. Research some shit, guys. If you're ever going to something, make sure you know what it is. I went in so blind on this, and I really should have put more thought into it. I have four that have to get potty trained. It's not going well. Oh, man. Well, especially if they all see that the other ones don't do it, then they're not going to want to do it. They don't want to be the odd man out. I would have enjoyed the event and probably wouldn't have read the map. Yeah, like just me reading that map to you guys when I was telling you what was going on, I was like, my eyes were all blurring and I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is too much information. <laughs> But yeah, the fireworks were fucking insane. And I didn't catch it on camera, but um, one of the things, the explosion was so loud. Like I felt it like inside my chest. And even though there were fireworks going on the whole time, it scared the shit out of me. Like I, uh, like I had to like take a minute and make sure like nothing bad had happened because it was so fucking loud. I couldn't believe it. Um, but yeah, there was so much cool shit and there's probably something else to be said about like a collective consciousness when you're around that many artistic people that, um, it kind of, I don't know, it probably does something to you and makes you want to, I mean, inspiration's one thing, but like being around that much shit, it's like, um, 
I think it's on a level past inspiration. And I bet, I bet you, I bet you that like people who go to events like this that are not necessarily creative people, but they go to these events when they leave and come back, they probably have that coming down the mountain thing that I talked about with you guys before about how you're at this thing and it's almost like a life changing experience. And then you have to go back home to your normal life, to normal people who aren't going to understand. And it just like, you have this like weird level of depression. So you're always chasing that dragon. So the next time you hear there's an event, you go to the event, just hoping to get that like endorphin rush that you had when you were around all of that energy. You know what I'm saying? Ah, hearing you triggers me to want to write. Good, Caitlin. That's what I'm here for. That's the only reason why I'm here. I'm here to trigger you to write something. Right now, Caitlin's next book, How to Piss in a Laptop by Caitlin. Uh, yeah. <sighs> well, okay, guys. Um, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. I haven't eaten anything, so I might want to do that. But I need to clean, and I, I'm kind of still in this, like, phase of wanting to get rid of everything. Like, knowing that the table's not coming back in here kind of freed me a little bit. And um, so now I have no table and, like, 12 chairs, so maybe I will start doing something with that. I need to start taking all my paintings down and flattening them so I can pack them. Um, yeah, and somehow or another, Caitlin's going to have to try to get me to her neck of the woods so I could piss in her laptop. So um, that's coming here soon. Make a video of that. That should do well. Um, see how that goes. But, um, yeah, I really want to just get rid of as much stuff as humanly possible. Kent, what is up? Tie-dye reflections. For sure. For sure. I'll put it in my calendar. Yeah, well, let me know what date that is so I know when to be there. But yeah, so I have a lot of things I have to do. Man, I'm seriously so pissed that I didn't do the things that I've thought about doing now. Ah, oh, that really fucking gets me, man. I'm really pissed off about it. Full moon tomorrow. Oh, is it tomorrow? I thought it already happened. Wow, the moon was so big out in the desert. I mean, I'm sure it's the same moon that we all saw, but I thought it was full. Okay, so full moon's tomorrow. All right. Well, then I will chain myself to the bed so I don't hurt anybody. <sighs> hmm. I could have sworn that was a full moon. I'm going to have to go back and look at the footage because, like, I saw it in the footage. So now I'm, like, questioning. I'm like, wow. I mean, I guess when it's almost full, it kind of looks full if you're not really looking at it. So that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to figure out what to do and figure out what to get rid of. Um, there will be other videos coming up. Oh, and I put a video up earlier today, and there's going to be a second part of that um, later in the week. I have some thoughts that I'm putting together here, and we'll see how that goes. But, um, yeah. So other than that, guys keep doing the thing and um, have a good week. Okay. It's just a few hours away. Do it well, guys. See ya.